So this is the, uh, I guess we switch for it. Yeah, you're good. Um, so I'm Carl Baker. Uh, I'm going to do a brief overview of logistics network modeling. And then Cyril is going to do a, a, an actual live demonstration. Oh, cool. All right, so that should be good. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because I think you guys would probably want to see the software. Um, just, just before I get started, how many of you had some information or some introduction to what logistics network modeling is? Yeah, sort of, a, okay. So a lot of you have at least some preconceived understanding of what logistics network modeling is. Um, I'm gonna, well, as usual, I'm gonna take a slightly different twist on this. Uh, it's safe harbor since it's a future. So I'm gonna give you sort of an introduction, but my introduction is gonna be not necessarily uh, just all about the types of simulations you can do, but I'm gonna actually sort of give you sort of a, a how-to and as a how-to, I'm going to give you sort of an understanding of what logistics network modeling will actually let you do uh, when that product is available, okay? So sort of introduction, usage, and then we'll go to the demo. And a lot of you won't understand what I'm actually showing you here, but I think this is sort of stuff that'll sit in the back of your mind so you have a general understanding of how the product works. Uh, a little bit lower level than maybe what you've seen in some of the other presentations that maybe Sundar Runapuram or Srini Rajagopal have given to you guys, if, you, if those are the folks you've talked with. So logistics network modeling. So the, the idea here is to provide, if you will, sort of a toolkit that'll let you do strategic, tactical, and operational simulations. And we use the word simulations because you're actually using bulk planning to sort of, if you will, sort of simulate things that you've set up. Uh, in the different scenarios. So the idea is you create different scenarios and then you compare the results of those scenarios with this tool. So it's a, it's a very powerful tool for sort of setting up these scenarios, sort of generating the data and making it available for the whole plan to then run these simulations. Uh, and I'll walk you through that. Uh, and this is just, this will obviously show you where it fits into the menu and all that stuff. So with any sort of sort of network level modeling, I think the most important thing is to understand the, what's the project you want to work on? What is it that you want to test? Uh, what types of things do you want to investigate with this tool? Uh, I'm going to walk you through sort of a quick uh, use case here of, I'm just going to try two different distribution centers and see the impact on cost running it against two or one set of orders, okay? So there's a so a, a typical project might be hey I want to consider uh, different distribution center locations and see the impact from the cost and time to actually service from those different distribution centers and there's all sorts of things you could also do I want to look at forecasted demand and see what kind of capacity I need to set up from a carrier based perspective based on that forecast so those are the sort of things that you can set up uh, and then obviously you know you, you run that. Uh, with it, uh, logistic network modeling. So there's there's sort of, if you will, sort of three simple steps here. The first one is to sort of set things up. And in uh, L&M speak, that's sort of setting up your modeling project and then settling up, setting up the different scenarios that support that project. The next thing is to solve it. And that's, again, for each of those scenarios that you define for a project, you're gonna run a bulk plan or a set of bulk plans in that scenario to generate the results. And then the next step is to analyze the results from those runs, okay? So it's a fairly simple over, overall process. So the first one, as I said, that first step is that sort of setup. And again, that's setting up your, your modeling project. You want to identify the data that you're going to use in the scenarios that are within that project. You want to understand the manipulations that you're going to run against that data to set up those different scenarios. Um, so in the scenario where I want to change, if you will, the DC, in this very simple scenario, I have one set of orders, and I want to change the source location on those order bases. So th that's a fairly simple thing, and you guys could do that today. So you think about that. If you wanted to test what would be the cost of running this set of orders from this DC versus that DC, well, you probably set up two sets of orders and have two different source locations. In LNM, you can actually take that one set of orders and use the tools within this LNM uh, system to, if you will, sort of in memory change those locations. So you don't actually have to persist those changes. 
it'll do that for you in memory. And then you don't have to create multiple sets of orders, you don't have to do a lot of data manipulation. You do data manipulation virtually, you don't have the data manipulation as sort of a persistent data. So just again at a high level and then Cyril will obviously run you through this. So this is what my project looks like for my simple, I want to test two different distribution centers. At the high level, hey, my project is I'm going to do DC1 versus DC2. So it's important because when you do these simulations, you're going to have a lot of them. So it's important for you to have sort of meaningful definitions of you know, IDs and all that sort of stuff. You actually understand we have 70 or 80 different simulations. You understand, well, what was the purpose of that simulation? And then I have two scenarios here. I have DC1 as the source location for the orders that I'm going to run in this project. And then I have DC2 as a source location. And what I'm going to do is when I run this project, it actually takes one set of orders, creates two bulk plans, and runs them for those two different sources. Okay. Um, so just sort of an, an aside here. So again, the, the benefits of this, this, this logistics network modeling is actually the tools that it gives you to sort of set up and run those different scenarios. So I just want to touch on some of the key tools here. So at the scenario level, you can vary the parameter set that you're going to use. So that's actually you know, pretty good. So you could, if you wanted to test different parameter settings, you could use logistics network modeling to test and see what's the implication of changing different variables in a parameter set. And I know a lot of you, you know, I've seen you in your bulk plan, you go to the parameter set, you have pages, so different parameters, you persisted. Another thing that this lets you do is you can just do a parameter override. So instead of creating separate parameter sets to test different values, try different things that you want to do a you know a three opt or a two opt or whatever it is for sequencing, you can just change that one variable sort of virtually in each of the scenarios. So you can set up a different scenario, try different parameter settings, but not have to persist a whole bunch of different parameter sets in the system. So that's a that's a nice change, and I can see that as that's sort of a nice implementation tool that you could use to quickly simulate, well, what's the implication of different parameter setting? The other thing that's nice at the, the scenario level, again, is the ability to specify explicitly the itinerary that should be used when you run that particular scenario. And it, this is where you begin to think about, so I can specifically run a bulk plan and specify the itinerary that needs to be used well, that gives you all sorts of tools to set constraints, to set the, if you will, so the, the amount of changes or the things that it will consider when it actually runs that bulk plan. So these are the these are the sort of things you can do: specify a specific itinerary or specify a set of itineraries. And I know a lot of you today, what you do, you attach the itinerary to the order and you run the bulk plan that way. You restrict it that way. So there's a lot of data manipulation that you do. You do the same thing today but you don't have a, a tool that lets you do that sort of simply and across the set of orders. The next two items, this modeling data scenario, the scenario, the data rules, and data rule instance. This is, this is one of the, I put an asterisk to it, and I'll, I'll talk to this in a little bit more uh, detail in a second. Um, but this is a very powerful tool. This basically lets you do sort of mass update against a, a set of objects in the application. So think about order releases like in my scenario. I'm going to take a set of order releases and I'm going to do a mass update against the source location for the two different scenarios. You can do that sort of mass update with these data rules and data rule instances across a whole bunch of objects in the system. So that gives you a lot of power to do things, if you will. The, the modeling bulk plan specification, again, at the scenario level, this is where you can take that simulation and take that set of orders and sort of break them up into real-world bulk plan simulations. So for instance, if you have 30 days worth of orders, we well, didn't get the 30 days worth of orders all at once. You get them one day at a time. The idea here is you can run a simulation where you actually take that set of orders in that simulation and break it up into 30 separate bulk plans and simulate how you actually get those orders over time, as opposed to pretending that running it all on one bulk plan is a realistic representation of how you get those orders. So again, just real quick, the data rule, data rule instance, think of that as mass update in a virtual way. So you run your scenario, you change the data, it's not persisting it in the database, it's just persisting it in memory 
when it runs that simulation. So that's the idea there. And in my, my little example here, so the data rule says what on an object can I change? And in my case, for the order release, the data rule instance that I'm gonna let somebody actually change is the, the source of that location, right? Or the, the, the order source location is what I'm gonna let them change. And the reason we did, we sort of split this up, you sort of think that, well, why do I have, why do I have a data rule and a data rule instance? The thought here is that you can allow sort of a super user to configure these data rules, and then your analyst can use the actual instances to specify the sort of things they want to do at actually at a scenario level. So that's the that's sort of a behind the scenes why we did that. And anyway, that's this is how it basically looks for one of my scenarios. Um, so I'm changing the DC to DC one, and it's for this set of orders, and I've got two of those. Now the modeling bulk plan specification. So what this lets you do, again, like I said, it lets you set up when you run that bulk plan simulation, it says, well, when does the bulk plan start? When is the first shipment gonna start in that bulk plan? So you can specify that. Um, you can specify how often are you running that bulk plan. So if you run two bulk plans a day, you can set it up to say, okay, I run it every four hours, or you should say, in this case, I run it you know, <laughs> one, one per day. Um, in this example I'm doing, it's 30 days. So I run it once per day, I want 30 of them. And then I want to ask, well, how far out to the set of orders that I have in this simulation? Do I just look at one day at a time? Or can I look at a window of orders? So it also allows you to, to define that when you run the simulation. So these are the, when you think of LNM, it isn't just all you know sexy graphs and all that sort. Of, it's really these tools that let you do these simulations. This is the heart of what LNM really is. And, and one other thing, just as a sort of a side note, when we documented this, we assumed the user understood OTM. Because it's, it's, you know, I see some blank looks on folks' faces, they're like, I don't know what he's talking about. This, this tool sort of assumes that you had an undergraduate degree in OTM, and this is a master's level in using OTM to do these simulations, okay? Uh, so anyway, you, you, you guys sort of get the, the essence there. Uh, the next thing is actually doing that solve. So you can run the, you know, you set up your simulations, your project, the scenarios that you want, and then you actually run a solve, and you run that solve at the project level. So you can run for all the scenarios you've set up at a, at a uh, project level. You just run the bulk plan for all of them. And then the next step is sort of analyzing, and the, the analysis here is, as that, as those actual scenarios are running, you can actually see the bulk plan results that are generated as part of the, uh, the actual bulk plans that are run for each of those scenarios. So you can do a quick side-by-side -side comparison at that level to see what the results are. You can also do, and this is more for your sort of operational simulations, you can actually bring all this information into a workbench and all the objects that are associated with LNM are available in a workbench. So there's the project, the scenario, and there's also a new thing called an LNM, a, a modeling shipment. And all that information is available, so you can do this sort of side-by-side -side analysis of one scenario versus another. And this is the sort of thing you do at a detailed level. If you're doing sort of a longer range, a lot more data, remember you're running potentially, you could run potentially hundreds of bulk plants in this, we have a new logistics network modeling intelligence. So the data that's generated in the simulations can all be pushed into uh, business, into the intelligence model. And then you can begin to do aggregation, begin to do analysis over time at the, the, you know, the shipments that are actually generated as part of that simulation. So, and this is not your, your FTI, you're not like persisting, this isn't data warehouse type stuff. This is, you push it over, you do your analysis, and then you can wipe it out. So there's ability to push the data over, do your analysis, and then clean it out, and then do it again as necessary. Okay, so it's a little bit more transactional based on the project. So that's the, the happiness in light, the, you know, you do the, the setup, the solve, and the analyze. That's, that's basically, you know, sort of the steps. And I know we haven't released it yet, but we've already started to think about the things that need to be done. So the first version, obviously there's plenty of things that we, we know need to be added. 
One of them is, you know, the additional tools to actually sort of CSV load the data into this tool. Uh, right now, a lot of this is based on the data that's already been loaded into OTM. So orders, order movements, that sort of thing. The idea here would be able to load in that data in a much simpler fashion and not have to rely on XMLing in orders and locations and that sort of stuff. Um, other tools to sort of move data and then improve scenario sort of aggregation tools or some of the things we're looking at. Okay? And with that, Cyril, I'll let you show them what it looks like. Thank you, Doc. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah? So good morning. First, you define your modeling project. You define your modeling scenario. Direct, dynamic cross-dock, or through cross-dock, for instance. You will be able to find those scenarios below your modeling project. When you select your scenario, then you will see the different shipments that have been built. And when you select your shipment, you will find all the different stops related to the shipment. So here, if I select through the cross dock, then the modeling shipment will be updated and the stops will be refreshed as well. And you have the capability to see all the movements in the map. In this project modeling, for instance, we are uh, simulating the different source locations, the different distribution center. So here, for instance, we use uh, Philadelphia. On this scenario, we are using Boston. The other scenario remain the historical one. So here we can compare the different inputs. run the simulation and you can see here the outcome. Transportation plan impact if carrier increases range. 